Right, hello, welcome back to another video. So, I'm not on fixing anything today, I have an actual proper fabrication job to do, making something from scratch. So I've got a bucket to make for a JCB loading shovel. So I'll just draw you a quick picture on this bit of plate that I'm using. This is gonna be the floor of the bucket. I'll just draw you a quick picture on here, show you how I'm gonna do it, and then I'll start making it. Right, so I'm no artist, so this is just a very basic picture. Right, so this is gonna be the floor, and then it's gonna curl around like that at the back. So that's gonna be one sheet, which is this sheet here. So I haven't got any rollers big enough to be able to roll that. So I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna like bump press it. So I'm gonna press it every 40 mil around there to get me that, that roll. And then, so that's the bottom and the sort of the back. And there's gonna be another sheet which is going to be like the back. So that'll be the top of the bucket. It'll come down here like that. Then there'll be another press on it like that. And that'll come to there. So that'll be the back of the bucket. Oh, there'll also be a press on here as well. So that's like your bottom and your back. There'll be a, another bit pressed in there to fill that gap in there for the strength of the top of the bucket. And then there'll be two side plates to make. So there'll be a side plate this side, and then obviously a side plate the other side. So that's like your basic frame of the bucket. Then there'll be a bucket edge on the front, there like that. Then there'll be straps that come all the way around the bucket. Pressed around there like that. Pressed up there and they'll come all the way up to the top of the bucket and there around there like that. That'll be out of, the bottom might be out of 15 mil. The back probably be out of 12 mil. The, the, the actual shell of the bucket will be made out of six mil. So this bottom plate that back plate will be six mil, sides will be six mil, and then there'll be the big brackets to go on the back that is what I use to pick up the bucket. So they'll look something like that. And they'll be profiled out of 40 mil plate. So that's that's basic layout of how I'm gonna make the bucket. Got this marked out already. These are all my press marks and I've also got a mark there to use to measure as a reference point to make sure I've got the right curl on it. So it'll be a two-man operation pressing this and the back out so my dad's going to come and give me a hand to do the pressing and then once we've got the pressing done it should all be plain sailing. So my job before I set up on my own was actually making these. I spent like seven, seven and a half years working for an agricultural engineers or fabricators making buckets and handling equipment for loaders and such like. So yeah, we did other engineering jobs as well, but yeah, that was a big part of the job was making these. So yeah, if I can remember how to do it, we should be fairly easy. And the bucket that this one is replacing is actually one I made at my old job. So tonight I've just been getting all my press marks marked on and then I've just pressed this bit as a test piece just to make sure my settings are right. So that's what the back of the bucket is gonna look like. So now in the morning, we can get this bit pressed and that's gonna be the back. So I've got that to mark out and we'll get that pressed and then we can get it, start putting it together. So it's not very often my bench is as clean as this. But I've had to give it a good clean to make this bucket. So I've had to put a little extension on that end as well because the bucket is wider than the, what the bench is. So that's just, just a bit of plate that's sat on um, but it'll be to support the side plate when I put the side plate on. I've just sat these squares of five mil on as well. So when I put sit the uh, sit the floor on, it's five mil off the surface. So then when the sides go on, there's like a lip underneath. So there's like five mil of overlap. So you, there's a nice gap to nice space to run a weld down. Anyway, you'll see what I mean when once I've got the side on turned upside down.
Right, so I've got that pressed and put on the bench. It's not come out as quite as well as I was hoping it would do. Um, I would have liked it to be in a little bit tighter curve. I should have had a bit more setting, press setting on when I pressed them. And then when you look down the edge, there's a bit of a bow in the middle. Now, whether that's because of my dodgy um, press tool in or not, I'm not sure. It's the first time I've pressed something like this with my press. But I could have overcome that if I'd have known about it. I could have. I've often pressed stuff about my old job when we're making buckets and stuff. I rolling it or pressing it, it comes out like that sometimes. And the way to overcome it is by putting cardboard in the middle. And the thickness of the cardboard is enough to make up the difference. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had that bow in the middle then if I'd have, if I'd have known and done that. But anyway, I'll be able to work around that. I'll have to. We put a bit of box section across and clamp it to it to pull it straight. So I've got that issue solved. I've just tacked a bit of box section down there. That's nice and straight now. So I've had to use 100 by 100 box because it's the only bit of box I had spare that was long enough to reach the full width of the bucket. It's uh, two and a half meters wide. Well, 2.54 meters wide, which is eight foot four. Now I've just tacked these in. Um, just That one's just pushing back a little bit. And that one's just pulling in a little bit because it was 10 mil difference between there and there and then this side and here so that's what they're for so everything's square and straight now so I'm happy with that Right, so that's the back piece pressed now and um, it's pretty awkward getting it out of the press because the distance between the top tool and the bottom tool is less than what that is so you have to either have to slide it out one end or you have to stand it upright and then slide it out anyway it's done now so we have to offer that up onto the back of there and get it set at the right angle
Right, so I've got that sort of sat where I want it now. I've just got some props in here just to support it and hold it. So I'll put some tacks along the cross, across the top there and then under the back. And then I can take the forklift off. It'll support itself on these props and get the side. And then I can get some sides cut out, tack the sides on, and then all these props can come out. So I've got the side plates cut out, I've got them sat on there, so it's starting to look a bit like a bucket now. But there's some some strips to weld up the side of these side plates before I before I tack them on. So um, I've just sat them on there to make sure that the right, make sure they fit properly. Yeah, so I'll take them back off again, and then I'll cut some strips of 100 by 12 out to go up the side of there, and then uh, sit them back on tack them on and then there's a box to make to fit in the top of there so I always wear one of these when I'm grinding now so I did years without wearing one, but breathing in dust and metal particles is it's not for me anymore. So yeah, I always wear one of these now. With proper goggles that sparks can't get in. And your ear defenders. Right, so I've got that clamped on there now. Uh, well, I had to take it off again because I've forgotten to mark it onto that one. So I've marked that one onto that one. So I know where to cut that one off because they'll both be identical. So yeah, I've marked this one on. I'm going to fully weld it down the front and then stitch weld it down the back. So I'm just going to do it in 10 inch welds like do every other one just to control the heat a bit so it doesn't warp. And then we'll get this one welded on and then do the other one.
right, so I've got that one all welded down. And just stitched it down the back. So while I did the first welds, and then while it was cooling a bit before I did the second welds, I've got this one, one ready. So that one's ready to tack on, all marked out. It's got oil, oil, oil drips out my forklift. It's pretty bad, is that? Right, so that's the second one welded up. So I welded down there, down the back. So while that one cools down, I'll just show you the next bit I need to make. Right, so this is the top box of the bucket. Obviously this won't be here once I've got the side tacked on. But this is like your main strength of the bucket because you, your brackets are sort of towards the middle and then you t all your tear out force is transmitted across this box and then onto your sides and then down to your, down to your edge. So this needs to be fairly strong. So I could just weld a flat bit of plate across there. That would be the easiest option. But just to give it some extra strength, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring a plate across here and then put a press on the end. And so then the other plate, well, the other box, it'll be like overlapping there, pressed to 90 degrees and across there. And then that should give it some extra strength. And for the sake of you know, a little bit more steel and just bit of time pressing it it's definitely worth it so I'll uh, get that measured get me a bit of steel cut out press it 90 degrees and then once I've got this side put on then I can lift that box up and then tack that in as well so you can see down there down that press it's nice and straight so that bit of cardboard I put in just helped to remove any bow in the middle the only thing is it's not quite set bang right is my, in my press obviously it's, it presses a little bit more at one side than it does at the other so this is 90 degrees and that end is a little bit off 90 degrees so when I've got this box put in I might just have to give it a knock back at that end or pry back or something just to just so it give it a gap when I put this other bit in So that's both sides tacked on now. I thought I'd give you a little close up of the welds because I know people like to look at welds. So, this bit of plate here that I've been avoiding putting back up on the rack because I knew I needed it for this job. So, I'll pick it up now, put it on the CNC table, and then I'm not actually going to use the CNC part of it, I'm just going to use it to cut a straight line. So I'll cut a strip off that at 255mm wide by um, 
two, five, three, five long. And then we use that to press to go in the top box bit. So that's that bit cut out and pressed. So I think I'll sit that on the tines and then lift it up into the bucket because it'll be quite heavy and awkward to get it where we need it. So I've taken them two props out as well. So it's ready to go in. So this top box is going in now, um, but because this had pressed a little bit more at one end than it had at the other, there's a bit of a gap under that end. So what I'm doing is I'm just tacking this to the other side, and then just knocking a wedge in, and it's just nipping up that gap, and then I can tack it. So it doesn't seem like it needs much, so I've just worked my way along, just tack that on, knock the wedge in, tack it, and then do the same again. Right, so that's the top, the top box in now. So I think I'll go and bring the bucket edge round and cut the bucket edge to length, and then we can get that put underneath it. So I've taken them gussets out, them uh, braces out there, but I'm going to leave that box in until I've done a bit of welding on it before I take it out. So this is a bucket edge I'm using. It's 200 mil that way, 25 mil thick. It's a HP, HB 500, so it's a heat treated bucket edge. So it should uh, last a lot longer than a normal mild steel bucket edge. So this edge is three meters long because the bucket is eight foot, well be eight foot six wide altogether. Well, it's eight foot, it's uh, 101 and a half inches wide is a bucket and then I want another inch onto that so I've got a bit to weld it either side so I want 102 and a half inches so that's where I need to cut it off at so it just so happens that there's 400 mil going to be left over 
so that'll cut nicely in half to make two squares and then I can weld them on the bottom of the bucket at the back and they'll act like little wear pads so if you're wondering why sometimes I use inches and sometimes I use uh, metric it's, I'll just use whatever's nearest or whatever's easiest at the time I'll go to half an inch anything less than half an inch you're just making making life hard for yourself Right, so I've got the edge under and I've got it clamped down. I've got it marked where I'm going to do my welds. So I'm about at the stage now where I can start doing a bit of welding. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to weld down these sides and then across the top. I still have some gussets to make to go in there yet, but I can, I can do that after I've got this welding done. Then also I'm going to weld the edge on across the front.
Right, so that's all welded around there now. That's the edge welded on and that side welded around. So that's what my welds look like. It's one continuous weld and then the edge I welded in in uh, 10 inch strips. Is that weld? So uh, it's about ready to come off the bench now. I've got welded across the top, across the top of there. So yeah, it's about ready to come off the bench now. Right, so that's sat on its back now. So I've uh, got a good bit of welding to do inside there. And there's this seam to weld across the back. I'll do that when I've tipped it upside down, but while it's at this angle, there's just a bit of a gap. So I'll, I'll just tack a pry bar on and just give it a little nip up just to close that gap up. Right, so that's all welded round now. That from this down here to still weld, but I'll do that when the bucket's upside down. I mean, there's a bit there to weld, but I'll do that. Um, I'll put the bucket on a better angle to do that. So yeah, that's the inside. It's about complete now. Apart, well, there's some gussets to go in there as well, but that's the last job to do. So now what I'm going to do is flip the bucket completely upside down so this bit's facing up and then there's that to weld down 
these to weld round and then there's bottom straps to make that come down here then some some cross straps to go on it and then them little wear pads to weld on Right, so it's upside down now. It's sat there quite nice. It's not going to go over balance, so I'm happy that that's sat there like that. Right, so this is anti splatter that I'm spraying on. It's not actually SIF active fizz. It's, uh, yeah, it's anti splatter to stop the splatter sticking so much. Right, so that's welded all the way around now so I can uh, make the straps that go on the back so you can see when I wobble the bucket you might not be able to see on camera but there's, there's a, there is not much strength in the floor at the moment there's a fair bit of flex in the edge so it needs some good strong straps there'll be two going that way and then I'll put some infills in that way and that'll put some strength back in the floor to do that I'm going to use this 150 by 15 flat bar. So I've got one piece cut to length, so I'm just going to press this one now. So it'll be a bit of to and fro back and forth to the press, but the best way I've found to do these is just press them where they need it. So I'll do one press there, I'll press it a little bit, I'm not quite sure what press setting I'll need yet. And then do another press where it like touches and where it just starts to not touch it anymore that's where you want to press and then keep doing that until I get to there and then it will need another press back back up this way so then it will, should fit nice and tight around there and onto that so I've got a few presses done it's starting to follow it around nicely another press another press about there somewhere So that's the first one pressed. I think that's as good a fit as what I can what I'm gonna get. A tiny gap there, but it'll be a welding gap. So now that's alright, we'll do the second one now.
Right, so that's them two pressed, both fit nicely around there. Though obviously there's a bit of a slight bulge in the floor here because there's a bit of a gap under that end. And it makes it look worse than it is because it's sat, it's like a seesaw, it's sat on one side of the of the uh, bulge. But anyway, I've got ways and means to clamp that down so that'll be all right. So then uh, I'll put these on at the right centers where the brackets need to go. Obviously the brackets go on the back of the bucket, but these want to be set at the same centre as uh, all the straps join up. So I'll get them set up, or I'll maybe grind all the mill scale off the sides first. And then uh, set them up, tack them on, and it wants some bits in the middle here, and then maybe some bits on the outside. Oh, and then there's uh, the wear pads to go on as well. Oh, I forgot to say earlier, I've clamped this bit of box section across the edge again just to keep everything nice and straight while I weld these bottom straps on and then to pull this bit down I've just tacked a bit of box on at that end and then use another bit of box with a clamp to, to pull that down and it's pulled that down nice so the floor's nice and straight again so now we'll cut some bits to go in here So I do have a big bandsaw, but it's too big to live in the workshop all the time and it takes too much setting up just to cut odd bits out like this, so it's just quicker and easier just to chop it off with the gas.
Right, so that's all welded round. I put them more towards the edge than than the middle, and then it gives gives that front edge a bit more strength. And then I've just stitch welded it round. There's no need to to seam weld everything underneath. I seam welded down them, and if you look down the edge, it's nice and straight. So that's all right. So I'll turn it back the right way up now. Right, so it's back the right way up again now. Uh, still them bits of weld to do in there. But I can't do a lot more now because I've run out of steel. I need some more um, 150 flap to make them straps for the back. And there's a brackets to profile out still. And there's a gussets to make. Gussets to make for the inside. Right, so I think that'll do for part one. Uh, so I can't do much more until my steel comes and we have a shed to concrete tomorrow so it'll be into next week before i get any more done on it so yeah hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and i'll see you in part two